Hey guys, welcome back. We'll continue building out our Django application and today we are going to learn about forms in Django. If you haven't seen the previous episodes, you can find them linked up here. Today we are going to cover how we can work with forms in Django and also how we can simplify our code and avoid code duplication. Let's get right into it. Let's pick up where we left off last time. So we created a list of different questions. We can select a question and then we're going to see the details page that lists the different entries. Now we can improve this view by actually using forms and updating the associated template. So let's open our code editor and inside of our polls app we can select detail.html which is located inside of our templates folder. We can then update the content to contain this form. So here we are using the URL template to reference the vote pass which we defined inside of our URLs module. And here we can see that we then reference the vote function inside of our views module. We also want to allow users to submit the choice they selected for the question. So therefore we are specifying our form to have a post method. And as part of that, we need to ensure that our form is secure. Therefore we are going to add a CSRF token. We then are presenting a radio button here and we are looping through all the choices which are associated with our question and then display that choice as a radio button that users can select. And then once users have selected that, they can click the submit button to confirm the change. So let's head back to our browser and let's reload the page. And here we can see we now have a form, so we can select the respective choice. And then we could press the vote button to confirm that choice. In addition to updating the template, we also need to update our view because we know that the vote function is associated with this particular template we've been working on. So let's head over to the views module. And so far we just had a dummy implementation of our vote function here. That simply returned that we are voting on a certain question. So if we have a look at that, we can select a choice here, click on vote, and then we simply see that we are voting on the specific question. Let's update this vote function now so that we can actually increase the number of votes for a certain choice. So in our updated vote function, we are first getting the question by providing the question class and then also the primary key for the specific question that we want to look at. And we are using the get object or 404 sh shortcut that we learned about before. So if that question cannot be fetched, then we would get a 404 error instead. And then we are using a try except block where we are trying to get the selected choice. Here we are using the request.post method submitting choice as a key. And this is a dictionary like object that lets us access submitted data by key name, submitted data by key name. So in this case, it would return the ID of the selected choice. Now, if there's no choice selected when we click on the vote button, so if we selected neither one of those choices here, for example, and we were to click the vote button, then we would be inside of the accept statement here and we render an error message that we didn't select a choice. But if the user selected a choice and voted on it, then we are going to increment the number of votes for the choice and we have to save that, of course, in the database. And finally, we are returning an HTTP response redirect to the results page. For this to work properly, we need to ensure that here at the very top of our file, we're actually importing the HTTP response redirect class. And we also need to add the reverse function here, which we are using here at the end. We are using the reverse function to ensure that we don't need to use any hard-coded URL in here but instead we can just reference the results pass here by name, which of course is a third pass that we defined here inside of urls.py. So after submitting our vote, we are redirected to the results page. And if we have a look at that inside of our views module, we can see that so far we basically are still using a placeholder text. So we simply show the response, you're looking at the results of the question. Let's have a look at that. So if for example, on the WhatsApp question, we select not much and we click on vote, then we can see we still get that generic response that we're looking at the result of question one. Of course, we want to change that so we can update our results function. So here we first are going to get the question object by using get object or 404 passing the question class to it. And then also the primary key that's equal to the question ID. And then we want to render a new template, specifically a results.html page. And we are passing the question as context to it. So let's create that additional template. So inside of our templates folder, we have the poll subdirectory and we can just right click here and then create a new file, which we are going to call results.html. 
Inside of our template, we first want to display the question text as a heading, and then we have an unordered list, inside of which we are looping through all the different choices associated with that particular question, and then we are displaying the choice text, and the number of votes associated with that choice, and we are also displaying the text votes, and here we are using a filter, so that means we are using this pipe character inside of those two curly braces, and this allows us to automatically display an S at the end of votes, if there's zero or more than one vote, and otherwise we are going to display vote. So this filter here ensures that we either display vote or votes, so it's grammatically correct. And in the end here, we are adding a link using the URL template to switch back to the details page with the text vote again. So let's save that change and let's head over to our browser again. And if we start at the beginning again, we can select the question what's up to see our new form that we had before. Then we can select a choice here and we can click on the vote button. And now we see the new page here that displays the two choices and the number of votes. And we can always switch back to vote again. So let's say we are going to vote for not much again. We confirm and then we can see now we increase the number of votes from three to four. Now at this point we updated our application to include a form and to properly display the number of votes for each of the choices that we selected. But if we take a closer look at our code so far, we can see that we have some redundant code here. So for example, inside of our detail function and the results function, we can see that the code is very similar. So in both cases, we are first getting the question and then we are rendering a view. The only difference really is that the render template is different. And in such a case, we can use generic views in Django. And generic views allow us to shorten our code. They abstract some common patterns so that we don't even need to write any code. So let's update our poll app to use a generic view system and then we can remove quite a bit of the code that we wrote. And to do that, we are going to follow three steps. We're first going to convert the URL conf, then we are going to delete some of the old unneeded views, and then we are going to create new views based on Django's generic views. So as the first step, we can head over to urls.py, and inside of the different paths that we specified, we can update this. And specifically, rather than using views.index, we're going to type in views.indexView dot s view and we're going to repeat the same step for the other path as well. So here we updated the path to our detail page as well as the path to the result page. We did not change the path to the vote page because if we take a look inside of views.py we can see that the vote function is quite elaborate and quite different from the other functions that we're using inside of our views module. We also need to make an additional change to our detail view and results view. Rather than using the question ID here, we are going to remove this part and we're going to use the private key. And we're going to do the same here for our result view. So specifically, we're going to replace the question ID variable with the private key. And that change is necessary in order to properly work with generic views. We can now switch over to our views module and in the second step, remove the old code inside of our index function and also inside of our detail and results function. So let's start out with the index function. We're going to remove the old code and then we can amend our view and then we are going to add a new generic view. Specifically for the index, we are going to use a generic list view and that basically abstracts the case of displaying a list of objects. We then specify the template name, which is index.html inside of templates polls and then also the context object name, which is the latest question list. And as before, we have a function inside of this called get query set, which is going to get back the last five published questions in reverse order. Let's next update our detail view. So again, we can remove the old code here and then we can go ahead and we can update that with a generic view. This time we are not using a generic list view as before, but instead we are going to use a generic detail view and we're going to associate the question class with our model. And then as a template name, of course, we need to specify detail.html. And the generic detail view is used to display a detail page for a particular type of object. So therefore it works very well for our detail view and also for our results view. And finally, we can update our results function here. So let's remove the old code. And now we can also add a generic view that is of type details view. We are again using the question model here. And this time, of course, we are using the results template, which should be used as the template. Now heading back to the browser, we can then select one of the questions as before and let's see if everything works properly. So we can select a choice here, then we can click on vote 
Now we can see that this is still displayed properly. So our results page is rendered properly. Our detail page works properly using the generic view. And if we head back to the polls index page, we can see that the overview page is still rendered properly. So these generic views can be really helpful to help us cut down the amount of code that we write. And typically right at the beginning when we write our Django app, we would evaluate whether we can use a generic view or if we should write our own custom views. And then we would stick with that. So in this tutorial, we just took the step to see the difference between the two, but typically we would decide on that at the beginning and then stick with the choice. So just to recap, we learned how we can work with forms by updating our detail template to use a form to submit the votes that we selected. We also updated our vote function here to get the proper choice that we selected for our question and then saving it in the database and incrementing the number of votes. And then we created a new results template to display the choices that we selected. And then finally, we learned about generic views and how we can use them to cut down our code if we work with a very standard view. In the next video, we're going to cover how to test our application automatically. So feel free to subscribe to the channel to stay up to date about any new videos and see you guys in the next video.